Hi friends! In today's tutorial I will be taking you through three evergreen variations. We'll start with the one on the left and progress to the one on the right. I will include reference photos for you and everything. Let's get started. Get some green mixed up in your palette and I'm going to be using a round brush 8 through this entire thing. I'm starting off with drawing the trunk of the first tree with a pencil and a ruler. Make this easy on yourself. If that is easier than just painting a line right out of the gate, go ahead and do that. Then you'll start using the very tip of your brush. This should be a pretty fine point. And you'll start adding in small little dashes along the top of the tree. Out of the three trees, this one is the most classically shaped. When people picture a pine tree or an evergreen tree in their head, this is probably what they're thinking of. It's very, it's pretty symmetrical all the way down. It's a cone shape. So we'll start off with this one. And you want to be thinking about keeping the branches relatively thin and then making each one a little bit longer than the one above it. And there'll be subtle differences. Some of the branches along the way are a little bit shorter and closer to the trunk, but you'll see most of them start to flare out as we work toward the bottom. Most of the branches from about the halfway point of the tree on up have a very slight upward angle. And then in the bottom half of the tree, they start to go out to the sides a little bit more directly. And at the bottom of the tree, they start to angle down a little bit more. So we're going to echo all of that with the lines that we'll be making for our tree. You're basically keeping the same sort of stroke for this tree all the way down. You're just varying the direction that it's pointing. So either upward, outward or downward, and also the length of it. So toward the top, of course, it's shorter and then gets progressively longer toward the bottom of the tree. And since you can see the trunk in this photo, I'm going to go back through and just add a little bit more emphasis, a little bit more definition all the way up along the trunk of this tree. In these examples, we're not focused too much on the shade of green or a whole lot of shading. This is really just focused on the silhouette of each tree. This tree, our second one, has a bit more going on. It is a little fuller on the right side than on the left side. So we're going to focus on each side separately. This is another trick that you can use if you're getting used to the asymmetry of evergreen trees. They typically don't look the same on each side, and you might find it easier to focus on the left side. That's where we'll start with this one, and then we'll go over to the right side. The top of this tree has a pretty dense cone shape to it, and then the section I'm on right now, there are a couple branches that flare out a little bit further, and they're a little bit further down, so you're starting to see some light come through those branches, and the way that you can reflect that in your painting is by leaving gaps between your needles and the branches, and that will show you whatever it is that you have behind it, whether that's just your paper or if you have other trees or other things in the background of your painting. You also want to be thinking about which way the needles are pointed. So on this particular tree, they are mostly pointed down. So you'll have a bit of a swoop shape on the top of the branch, and then you'll see needles that are coming down from that. When you're first painting trees, you might find it helpful to do what we're doing here, which is have a reference photo easily available to you. And don't feel like you need to paint every single branch and needle. You definitely don't need to do that. It's tempting to when there's a photo in front of you, but really the idea with this is that it helps give you an overall silhouette that you're working with. You can see how symmetrical or asymmetrical it is. And then you also want to pay attention to which direction the branches are facing, which way the needles are going, are they going up or are they going down? And then how dense does the tree look? Can you see the trunk through it? You can't see too much of that right here. So we will be hiding that with our branches. 
Here's another technique that you can use as we work our way down the right side of this tree. If you think about your tree in terms of thirds, so the top third, middle third, bottom third, and lay out the general direction of some of the main branches. And that will help with blocking out the overall look of the tree. And it'll give you some structure to work with that'll help you as you fill the tree in. Anytime you see my hand going off the camera here, it's because I'm picking up more paint. You will need to do that periodically. As your brush starts to run out, just pick up some more. Now as we work down this tree again, so we've already laid out the main structure with some of the main branches, and now we're going back through and adding more detail. We'll add some smaller branches, and then the needles, you'll start to see those a little bit as well. And pay attention to how much light you can see coming through the tree. This one is a little bit more dense at the top, and then you get more of that light filtering through in the middle section. And then in that bottom third, it starts to become a little bit more dense down there. You can't see as much light coming through. As you start to get more comfortable with painting the silhouette and the shape of the trees, then you can start experimenting with different colors of green, whether it has warm undertones or cool undertones. You can experiment with different types of brushes and then also with shading different parts of the trees. For this one, we're just keeping it simple and straightforward. But if you'd like to see a video that goes a little bit more in depth on any of those areas, just let me know. Another thing you can do when you're first getting started with this is lay down your initial outline for the structure and then go back a few times, make a few passes over the tree and add more detail. It's always easier to add more detail as opposed to trying to go back and take some of that away. That's practically impossible with watercolor. So just keep your practice up and you will get the hang of it. Now for this third tree, this one is one that you would see along a coastline. These get pretty battered by wind and storms. This tree has been through it. <laughs> so you'll see that it looks more sparse than the types of evergreens that you'll see in a forest. This type of tree is great to know how to paint if you want to focus on more seascapes and more rugged landscapes. This one has uh, more variation in the branches. So you've got a pretty tight cluster up at the top. It starts with shorter branches and then they pretty quickly become long and extend a lot further out from the tree. We're also going to be focusing a lot more of the branches on the top third of this tree. You can see that's where most of the action is happening. When you get into the middle section, there's a little clump of branches that are pulled in a little bit more tightly. They don't extend out as far as the branches that are above them. That's unusual when you look at the other two types of evergreens that we did earlier in the tutorial. So really the takeaway is just to really make sure that when you're painting a subject, especially when you're working from a photo, that you're really looking at the overall shape that you're working with because it might be a little bit different than what you would picture in your mind's eye without any photo at all. Another difference with this tree is that the branches and the needles are directed upward, whereas on the previous tree they were directed downward. So you want to not only be paying attention to the overall shape of what you're working on, but then treat each element, so for example each branch, as its own painting when you're first starting out, and that'll help you isolate its characteristics, and you can choose what you want to include in your painting. This video was inspired by a comment from a viewer who I will tag in the comments. If you have an idea for a future video, feel free to leave a suggestion below, and I will tag you if I use your idea. Thank you so much for following along. Please subscribe if you liked the video, and I will see you again very soon.